Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Okay. I may not be able to stay. Actually, I, I won't be able to stay past like a <clears throat> quarter to the hour um, here in Texas, which is quarter to 10 here in Texas. Mm -hmm. Sure, no problem. Thanks for letting us know, though. Either way, we'll, we'll, we'll get started a few minutes after the hour, but in the meantime, if you'd like to share what part of the world you're in, uh, in the chat, that would be really awesome. And also, I'll just remind, actually, I'll wait till we get started for that. You do. Good, you say. Well, here in Oklahoma, it is cool and rainy this morning, which is quite nice. Uh, not uh, crazy hot, which has been very pleasant. My garden is really seeming to like it. We're having a very good gardening year so far. Um, here in Mexico, it's uh, like hurricane season and at least in my particular city, which is a, <laughs> like a semi-desert, it, it really, really benefits from uh, hurricane season because it's rainy season for me. So it's <laughs> nice and cool as well. Mm -hmm. What city are you in? I'm in Querétaro, which is like the central part of Mexico, like three hours away from Mexico City. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's unfortunately, I've spent a lot of time in northern Mexico, all through northern Mexico, in the Baja and Yucatan. I've not spent any time in central Mexico or southern Mexico other than the Yucatan. So I'm that's the big uh, blank spot in my experiences. And I'm really eager to, to make it down that direction sometime, but haven't yet. Well, uh, do tell me if, if you do and <laughs> maybe we can meet. Yeah, you bet. Well, I think we'll go ahead and get started with those who are here and we can, uh, can let me double check to make sure the recording is working. I think it is. There we go. So speaking of the recording, I'll just mention that we do record the services. We have a fair number of people who do watch later in recorded form, but I know that people, a lot of folks have different, different needs privacy wise. So if you do need to not be on the recording, uh, just turn, feel free to turn off your camera or change your name, uh, how you're identified in Zoom. So I just want to mention that. 
Other things I'll mention is that along the way, I'll be asking for some participation at some points in the service, uh, especially if there's anyone here who's Hebrew fluent. I don't know if we have anyone this morning or not, but if there is, uh, I will have a few things that I'll be looking for volunteers who could also read Hebrew. Uh, I'll do my best in Hebrew, but I'm not nearly as strong as some people, so I'm, um, but we'll have some readings along the way. And uh, later on the service, we will have some time for discussion, and we'll do breakout groups for that time. And I'll just mention that for our breakout rooms, those are not recorded. So that's also a space where you can speak more freely if you're concerned about the recording. So anyway, other fluent. than that. No, I'm sorry. I, I was going to say I'm not fluent, but I'd love to take a chance, try. Oh, please do. Yeah, no, no your, your Hebrew is better than mine. So we'll definitely... Mm -hmm there will be a few opportunities. So um, anyway, and other than that, just a reminder that once we get started, if you can uh, mute your mic, if you're not speaking, that just helps to control background noise and all that good stuff. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Let me turn on the screen share. Use a different computer and it all looks different, which is aggravating. There we go. Would someone like to read the English for this for this one? How good are the dwellings where we gather, serene and vibrant as the gardens by the river, the aloes and the pleasant cedar trees beside the water. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for people to dwell together in harmony. Shevadamim gam yakad, ine matob. Shevadamim gam yakad, ine matob manahim. Shevadamim gam yakad. And real quick, uh. I need to grab my charger, but while we're doing that, would someone like to volunteer to read the English on this one? And we, humanity, choose to keep a day of rest as an agreement for all time. For in six days we work, and on the seventh we cease from work and are afraid. And then would someone like to do the Hebrew on this one? Veshomrim bene hada hamet hashaba la so tet hashaba le dorotum berbito laham Veshomrim bene hada hamet hashaba la so tet hashaba le dorotum berbito laham Kisheshed yamim asu melaka Hasu malaka, kisheshet ya mima su malaka. Veshamrim beneha hada hamet hashaba. La so tet hashaba le dorotum berito lam. Veshamrim beneha hada hamet hashaba. La so tet hashaba le dorotum berito yam. Uvayam Hashvi Shav to Vayina Pashu Shav to Vayina Pashu Shav to Vayina Pashu Veshamrim Baneha Hadam Met Hashabat 
So now I'm going to turn off screen share in just a moment because I want to encourage you to take it, to take a moment to look at the people on your screen, to imagine them filled with happiness and joy. And for me, this moment is really about connection. It's about having this sense of that despite the many different parts of the world we're in today, I know just looking at the ch uh, from earlier, we have people from Brisbane in Australia, Fort Worth, Texas, Quebec, Canada, Richmond, Virginia, Castine, Maine, Kennesaw, Georgia, Princeton, New Jersey, and Oklahoma City, and probably other places too. For all the places that we we are different parts of the world, and yet we're all connected. And so, you know, I'll turn the share screen back on. And so we say this together: Bless the community which blesses us. Blessed is the community which bless which blesses forever and ever. Barku etakala hamavara, Baruk hakayal hamavara kleolam Who would like to read the English side on the Shema? I can do it. Uh, listen, Israel, our people are one, humanity is one. Let us work together to improve this world. Yema Israel, the Kadamenu, Adam Mecca, Ulanu Navod, Litakain, et Aholam. And let us pause for a moment to listen to the world around us. And would someone like to volunteer to read either the English or the Hebrew side on this? I'll read the Hebrew. Okay, thank you. Vihavta Lareacha Kamocha, the Holo of Ha, Uhona Shacha of Home Decha, the Yu Had Barim Haela, Allah Lav Chatamim. And let us love our fellow as ourselves with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our might, and let these words be upon our hearts. And would you like to continue on the Hebrew side? Vishinanatam Livanenu Undaber Bam Vishitenu Vivetenu Uv Lechinu Vaderak Ushakbaha Ukumenu Ukshatam Leod Al Yadenu Yayul Totafon Bene Nehu Uktatam Al Mizuzot Betenu Uvisharenu Impressing them upon our children, reciting them when we stay at home and when we go out, when we lie down and when we get up, binding them as signs in our hand serving as a symbol on our forehead, inscribing them on the doorposts of our homes and on our gates. This we believe to be true. Humankind is capable of redeeming itself from its troubles. Through our efforts, we heal disease, feed the hungry, lift up and free the downtrodden. We can achieve liberation through reason, compassion, and working together with trust in one another, with faith of a better future for all. Blessed is the light in humanity with which we redeem the world. And now we have a moment for our seven breath meditation. This is something that I've learned comes from the Kohenet uh, Jewish priestess movement. And it's a uh, kind of a mindfulness meditation. Um, for these instructions I'll be giving, and feel free uh, to do whatever you need to do to be in a more mindful space. If you want to turn off your camera, if you want to close your eyes, those are all completely fine. This is a breath meditation, so the focus is on the breath, but of course, feel free to breathe at whatever pace feels comfortable to you. Breathing in, I take breath into myself. Breathing out, I join the web of being. Breathing in, I rest in the present. Breathing out, I am part of past and future. Breathing in, I honor the shrine of my body. 
breathing out, I honor the shrine of the cosmos. Breathing in, presence fills me. Breathing out, presence enfolds me. Breathing in, I witness what is broken. Breathing out, I bow to what is perfect. Breathing in, I offer gratitude for what is. Breathing out, I accept all that changes. Breathing in, I pray for peace for myself. Breathing out, I pray for peace for all beings. We'll have a minute now for some silent meditation. Well, this for this morning for our Devar Torah time, I want to talk about a subject that's been on my mind a lot lately, and that is the topic of pluralism. Pluralism is a word that, that means basically a diversity of views and opinion, and often also means a diversity of practice. Um, and so the idea is being that in a community or a society, can people with different points of view be in the same space? Can they get along? Can they, can they be present despite difference? And I want to argue today that pluralism is an essential part of human community, and it's something that's essential for Judaism. Uh, part of this, sorry, my notes went away. Where, uh, there we go. Part of this, I would argue, goes back for Jews to our philosophical DNA, to what it is that we are about. As you know, we, we've all heard the old saying, if you have two Jews, you have three opinions. Um, and that reflects this idea that Judaism, inherent in Judaism, is the idea of disagreement and dialogue. And I think one of the best examples of this, and I'm going to share a screen for this because I wanted to show you if you haven't seen it before, a page of Talmud. Tal by the way, the Talmud is, it is the one of the first bits of our Jewish interpretive traditions. We're talking about after Tanakh. If you went to our Humanistic Judaism 101 class recently, we talked about Tanakh, Jewish scriptures, and that that what we have codified as, or canonized as, as Jewish scriptures, Tanakh, uh, really ends... Um, um, Oh, probably the last stuff was written a few hundred years BCE before the Common Era. But what we have so much written after that, and much of it was a matter of writing down what had been previously oral tradition. But there is the, there is a, a concern that if things weren't written down, that a lot would be lost. And so out of that came the first of these these big pieces of this interpretive tradition is Talmud. So I'm going to share a screen because I think this is very helpful to show just um, that dialogue and pluralism have been a part of what it means to be Jewish for a long, long time. So this on the screen here, this is a picture of the Talmud. Um, this is one of several websites dedicated to what's called Daf Yomi, which is a practice of studying the Talmud one pa day at, page at a time over the course, I believe, of seven years, I think. But this, you can see the text here is laid out in columns, and it's in it's a mix of Hebrew and Aramaic, is my understanding. But here's what, again, for those of us who are not Hebrew fluent, um, it's cool to see how the page is laid out. Now, we won't get a lot out of this, but what we can get a lot out of is translation. And here's a website that does uh, some translation of the, the, the same, that, that day, the daily page of Talmud. And so here's, I'm just going to read just a couple of bits here. So here, this, this first bit, it says, One must distance carcasses, graves in a tannery, 15 amos away from a city, due to their unpleasant owner, odor. One should not make a tannery except to the east of the city, since the wind is not so fierce. The odor will not be carried, carried to the city. 
Rabbi Akiva says it may be established on any side except the West, and he distances it 50, 50 amos away. One must distance a flax pole from his neighbor's vegetables and leek some onions and mustard plants from a beehive. The bees taste the mustard and then eat their honey to remove the sharpness left in their mouth. Rabbi Yossi maintains it is permissible in the case of, of mustard. Now, these are weird. This is weird stuff. It's dealing with uh, rules of how do you maintain community in the land of Israel. Bear in mind, they're talking about the direction of the wind and all of this. But bear in mind, they're writing this in Babylon. <laughs> it's, so it's all kind of a hypothetical argument about where's the right place to put smelly things in a community back in, in Eretz Israel, in the, in the land of Israel. So it's super fascinating that they're having this conversation. But nonetheless, this was, what's important here is you have two different rabbis disagree, saying one, one rabbi says any side but the West, it has to be 50, 50, yard, yard, 50 of these Amos away, whatever an Amos is. Uh, another one is and, and then he goes on to say that you have to distance other things a certain distance. You got to be real careful with the mustard plants because the bees will eat the mustard. We'll get to taste the mustard, but then I'll go back and eat their own honey to take the sharpest oh, out, and that from, keeps us from never. honey. But well, then well. Rabbi Yossi, oh yes. Anyway, so then Rabbi Yossi then says, "No, uh, it's okay about the mustard. Don't you worry about that." Now I point all this out to say, and this is more of a sully kind of thing. It's not super substantive to us today, but I point out this to show that the Talmud represents shows us this this Jewish tradition of not only recording more than one point of view, but also, well, not only set, showing that there is dialogue, but also recording dissenting points of view. In this case, the Talmud doesn't ever, the, ed, the, the editorial compiler never says whose opinion is right. And there's other passages we could find in Talmud that has even much more uh, sticky stuff. But nonetheless, throughout it, there's always dialogue. And that's what I mean by saying that pluralism, the idea of different opinions being present in the same community, is important because it really is a part of who we are as Jews. As Jews, we are not supposed to all agree. We actually are supposed to have differences of opinions. And there's something I would argue that in Judaism, some of the magic comes from the disagreement. Because in disagreement, what happens? two or more people come together, share different points of view, and then in the conversation, in the dialogue, sometimes a third path emerges. In fact, remember that old saying earlier, two Jews, three opinions. I personally think one way of reading that is to say, yeah, out of the two yeah, yeah. becomes a third. Sometimes a third is a matter of compromise, of two people bending a little. Sometimes it's a matter of in the course of dialogue, we discover that one, of, one or more of us discovers we're wrong. And I've certainly been there. I can think of th views I had 20 years ago, five, even five years ago. I see the world very differently because of dialogue. This issue of pluralism, I, th I do think it comes out in some very practical ways. And I think one of the biggies right now is actually on a controversial topic, that is Israel-Palestine. I'm not wanting us to have a discussion about that today because it's Shabbat. I, but what I do want to mention, though, is that in our community, the Spinoza Havra, we have different points of view. We have people who range from liberal Zionist to anti-Zionist and the people who say, I'm not comfortable with either of those polarities. We're still in community with each other. We're getting along most of the time. <laughs> not perfectly, but we get along because we stay in dialogue. There's many other issues that we might also have different points of view on. And instead of seeing that as a problem, which is how it's most often framed when people disagree, I want to argue instead that for in, in a Jewish context, this is actually a positive. And, it, and what, it, what does it take, though, to do this well? I think one of the biggies, it requires respect. And it also requires the maintenance of appropriate boundaries. Now, on the respect part, what I mean by that is, is that we have to be able to disagree without making it personal. And that's hard. That's really hard for a lot of reasons. Um, in the political arena here in this country right now, we are having a real hard time with that. <laughs> and I don't think we're alone in that, but it's certainly in the U.S., it's a really challenging time. People are getting personal very quickly. Instead of talking about issues, 
they, they attack each other. And they attack each other's respective leaders. That's a real problem. That's not a recipe for pluralism. Pluralism does depend upon mutual respect. The other piece of it is the maintenance of boundaries. And I realize this is probably a little more of a complicated concept. So I want to unpack this a little bit. And I'm hoping this, this, by the way, will be something we'll be talking about in just a little bit in discussion time. But what I mean by boundaries is, is that Judaism, at its heart, I would argue, and this is something I learned from my reform rabbi, does involve boundaries. And if we think about in Tanakh, in Torah, it's how much of the, the text is focused on holiness, of being set apart. It's often being framed as these practices, these rituals we're doing, these rules are meant to set us apart, to make us something different. Now, we, we today, as modern people, might frame it differently, but fundamentally, there are this sense that there are cultural practices and ideas that do set us apart. And so I think about, like, for instance, in a Spinoza hub, what boundaries do we have? Well, we're pretty wide open in many ways, but I think I'm going to try to describe what I think are a few normative practices or a few things that we have over time established as boundaries. One is, of course, we are focused on Judaism. Now, we bring in other traditions quite often. We often talk about, well, Judea Christianity teaches this. Islam teaches this. This philosopher, non-Jewish philosopher, teaches this. We're not as afraid of these other traditions, but we do keep grounding these other ideas back in the Jewish tradition. So that's one, one of, our, of our boundaries of saying that we, are, as a community, we do keep trying to bring it back to Judaism in some way, even as we explore other paths. What else do we have as a boundary? Where our theology, our, our liturgy, I should say, what we say in our services is non-theistic. Now, I can think about over the last couple of years, I think maybe once or twice I've brought in readings or songs that are that had theistic imagery. But you notice when we do that, I always point it out. We always say this, we're, we're using this song today because it has a really good idea about this other thing. We want to be clear that it has this theistic imagery too. That's not our thing. And so even in those exceptions, we try to frame it back non-theistically and 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 our and our liturgy that we use and by the way just so for anyone who doesn't know almost all the liturgy that i use in my services is stuff that martin has translated and rewritten and i really like what he does because he makes it flow with a lot of the tunes and whatnot of a more traditional service but nonetheless that's been a boundary line for us has been non-theistic liturgy uh, what else do we have as a boundary respect we, we do our best to be kind to each other, um, to allow dialogue to happen, but in respectful ways. It's not, we, we of course disagree, and that is not a problem, but we have as a boundary respect. Now, I bring this up to say that pluralism does not mean that there aren't any boundaries. Pluralism does not mean but it, that there aren't lines to be drawn. What pluralism does mean is that we limit those boundaries. We don't draw excessive boundaries. We don't insist that everyone must have the same opinion about Israel and Palestine. We don't insist that everyone must have the same opinion about Tashrut, kosher, or Shabbat observance, or any number of other things. That's not what we do. Pluralism means we have space for different people to have different opinions and different practices and for us, within those boundary lines of saying, in our communal space, we bring it all back to Judaism, we use non-theistic liturgy, and we're respectful of each other, within those boundary lines in place, we have a lot of freedom. We have space to explore, to ask questions. And so that's where I want to take, where I'd like to kind of challenge us for our discussion time now. Looks like, let's see how many people we have. We have 11 rooms, 11 people, or 11 screens at least so we'll, let's we'll break into um let's do three groups today so i'll get that queued up but while i'm doing that uh i'll just mention that my for our discussion we'll have about 10 minutes for discussion time and what i would like you to, to discuss is how do you see pluralism playing out in this community in other jewish communities and also in the broader world is pluralism important to you? And if so, why?
And so we'll have a few, we'll have about 10 minutes for discussion and breakout rooms. And then we'll come back. Uh, we'll have some, we'll ask each of the group to share a little bit of what they've learned. Uh, and we'll, we'll have some time together before we move on to the rest of the service. So anyway, I'll go ahead and send y'all out to breakout rooms and we'll see you uh, shortly. Should we keep going while we wait for the others? <laughs> well, I have a question. Um, how long do these services typically last? An hour, I'm presuming, is, but you stop guessing. Um, usually they last about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, maybe. Uh, we usually do leave the Zoom open for a bit longer afterwards for fellowship and discussion. Okay, well, good to have everyone back. By the way, one thing I forgot to, before we get into our discussion, I forgot to mention, usually we mentioned this beginning, but if you're not on our email list, be sure and email spinosahavra at gmail.com so you can get on our email list. We do send announcements out about all of our services, and that's the easiest way to stay in touch. So I just wanted to mention that real quick because we, we have someone new, new on this morning. Uh, just want to mention that. So, Anyway, let's go ahead and move into some discussion now. What were some of the things that came up in your conversations? And also, if your group talked about other stuff, as mine did, that's not a problem. Share with us a little bit about that, whatever you feel comfortable with. But uh, we'll have some time for some discussion for a few minutes before we move on with the rest of our service. Lisa. No, it... It was just very nice talking with our group. It felt very good, and very comfortable, and it's a it's a very difficult subject at this point, certainly in this country, and I probably pretty much everywhere now. Pluralism, I, Paula, take it. <laughs> <laughs> No, we, we, we just had a nice discussion about how bad things are. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and how, how contentious things are, basically. Yeah. Yeah. The email we get, the one I got any was signed by Paula. Is this the Paula? Okay. Good to see you in person. <laughs> yeah. I take care of the greeting and the lists and everything. My job. Keeps us all afloat. We wouldn't be able to function without that. We're a surprisingly quiet group. Yeah, it's funny. Every week's a little different. So, uh, you know, our group, uh, we ended up talking a little bit about like what actually ended up talking about what brought us here this morning. And uh, that was nice to hear uh, of what's drawing people here. And uh, we also talked a little bit about um, how this kind of plays out in other places, especially in the Unitarian world. Um, and so it's, it's interesting there. It seems like there's diversity of belief and practice as on the religious part, but often more consensus on other things, social issues, political issues. Um, and so I found that it's interesting that pluralism kind of looks different in different contexts and where you draw the boundaries looks different. Um, yeah, the existence of a humanist Jewish group is certainly adds to the pluralism in the conversations. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Something I've, I've noticed that I think it's interesting, and it might may be a coincidence, it, 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 it might not be, you know, uh, something really huge, but I noticed that um, we've always said we are non theistic. And I think many people 
or some people maybe uh, thought that we're actually atheists. And we specified a few weeks ago that this group is non-theistic, but spiritual in a way. And I noticed, I noticed that yeah. some people have stopped showing up after that. Could be a coincidence. They, maybe they didn't have time to be here anymore. But but I thought maybe, you know, maybe it's not what some people were looking for. Maybe they were looking for a fully openly atheistic group and, and they left. Maybe I'm imagining things. But it, it got me thinking about that. And it got me thinking about uh, pluralism, that maybe there's humanist spiritual and humanist atheist and i don't know maybe there's a difference even like between our groups i do think we've always stressed the spiritual aspect i think it's even on our website i'm not positive but mm -hmm. i think that word is was very prominent in the whole creation of of the Spinoza Havara. so i don't think anybody it's summer and <laughs> people are probably away um we, we do get a different group each time and also we get you know a bunch of people who you are new and come regularly and people who who have I mean I've communicated with some of these people who used to come very regularly and they don't because they're they can't keep track of the time or they're whatever and I've said I could remind them they say I'm not hanging out on social media and so people have their different reasons and also this group is so diverse this is like the most diverse group in the world I think because we're neurodiverse we're sexually diverse we're you know, other than being Jewish, but a lot of com converted Jews. So they have a lot of diversity in their background. And um, so people come and go, but I don't, I, I just, I don't think that's the reason, but I could be wrong. It could be a couple of people that does, does apply to, I don't know, but it's always been a central part of how we've described um, Spinoza Havara all along, so. Yeah, I would agree on that. I, I would mention that within the congregations of the Society of Humanistic Judaism, and that we're we're the, we're the newest congregation, by the way, of being a full full uh, fully full full membership in in the organization. But there does seem to be two polarities, and I wouldn't say they're being definitely different. There's more just polarities, and so we have, and I'm thinking about communities like the. Secular humanistic circle of the Puget Sound. I'm thinking about Folkshaw that do not look much like a congregation. They focus on education. They focus on culture. They don't really do services like we do. There are others more like us that do look more religious in a way, having services and things like that, but with non-theistic liturgy. And I personally think there's place for both. And I and I I've known Jewish humanistic Jews who really don't like the congregational vibe at all. It isn't their thing, but they are very committed to their Jewish book group. They're very committed to any number of other things. It's very important to them that connects them with their identity, but they're not, they're, they're not into Shabbat services and that's fine. There are others who are really drawn, drawn in the direction of, of a lot of the practices that look more traditional but like even within our congregate on our little community, we have a broad range of difference. Uh, Martin and I, you know, the two people that lead most of the services, we see things differently. He is much more uh, oriented towards traditional observance um, than I am. I'm much more. Let's throw it all up in the air and let's turn it around and let's. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Judaism and bound that that approach of let's turn it on its head. Um, I think there's, I, I also learn a lot from him and others who are more traditionally minded because it's, there's a wealth there. I also think that people like me who are saying, let's throw it all up in the air, that there's value for more traditional people to encounter. I think there's value in that synergy of the, of the, the differences. So, um, but I would also say, I do think that our, our attendance numbers do go down in the summer. And I think that is a universal Jewish trend. I don't know of any congregation that doesn't have their numbers go down. And it's not even a Jewish thing. It's Christians. Christian churches have the very same thing. Summertime people, people uh, on vacation, they're, you know, it's that, that's completely normal. So no cause for panic yet. <laughs> I have oh, okay, well, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 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 I want to apologize. I didn't mean anything uh, 
by it, by, by seeing a correlation where maybe there wasn't any. I, I just thought it was curious, but I, I gotta say, I just love it, what we have here. I didn't know what to expect uh, the first time I was here. And, and ever since the first time, uh, I was crying like in happiness because of, 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 of what I found. It was what I've always needed. And I just love it how it is and, and how diverse it is. I, I have a question. Um, how many of us, if you're willing, with a show of hands, are a member of another Jewish organization, God, a Kavara, an educational group? You know, how many of us have some other connection to Judaism other than this? Huh. Wow. Not even a majority. Maybe. Interesting. <laughs> and that's actually a big part of, of what we do is we're trying to meet, that we're trying to also provide Jewish community to people who don't have it elsewhere. Where, or that I think for me, part of the reason humanistic Judaism works so well for me is I love my reform gentlemen. I also don't see eye to eye them on a lot of things. The liturgy sometimes I feel pretty disconnected from. And so to me, I sometimes think of my time here as being an inoculation against theism. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of uh, helping to have that context. Erin, you have your hand up. Well, well, you're raising your hand to say I'm. Oh, I was just saying I'm also a member of. Okay, great. Okay. Other synagogues, but uh, talk to you later, Don. <laughs> Don's yeah, Shabbat Shalom, go. Don. Well, before we move on to the rest of the service, I did want, oh, we have uh, Janet, you have your hand up? I, um, like um, several people have said, as Andrea said, I cried actually the first, after the first time I came here too, because it was just so meaningful to me to have this place where you could be present, uh, you know, in this non-theistic way, but uh, all, you know, like spiritual way. I just thought that was so beautiful. I love the liturgy. And so I, I'm just so grateful. And I uh, also, I didn't re realize you're supposed to raise your hand. So I know I've interrupted people and I, I really apologize for that. I know I've made, I have even misheard people and then said stupid stuff. And I really am sorry for I, by doing that. <laughs> I, I really regret not realizing that. I also don't have the best, enter, I'm t like the opposite of tech savvy, <laughs> like untech savvy. So anyhow, um, I'm just so grateful for having this place and having this whole diversity of experiences and people all over the world. And just so I loved it when you ask us to look at everybody and just think about all the different places and, that's just so meaningful to me. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. I will mention the, the raise hand thing is, is, is often very helpful. If I, in my services, I don't, I know Martin really likes using the raise hand function. Um, it's certainly nice, uh, but it's also, I'm, I'm not a stickler on it at all. So uh, just to, just to be clear on that. Uh, by the way, speaking of community and the diversity of our community, I do have something, a little bit of show and tell. This is, wasn't on the original agenda, but I realized I kind of want to do this this morning. Some of y'all know that I work part-time as the editor of Humanistic Judaism magazine, and we have an article coming out in the next issue that's coming out hopefully next week, and we have an article about the Spinoza Havra, and I actually want to show y'all on the screen at least what it looks like, the pages, because it's, it's kind of cool, so... I'm going to share a screen real quick, and uh, I'm really excited about this because it's really going to give us some some good exposure. Um, so this is this is the the issue. And by the way, what's kind of exciting too the the front cover picture is from a brand new fledgling community in Central Florida. So I'm really excited they're they're focused on the cover. But let me jump to and this is the you know we're still in the process of editing. If you see any typos, we're not done yet, but uh, for this issue. But let me jump down to the story about this. And 
here it says feature the spinosa have and see these this map it shows where all of our members are and these are the 62 people that are actually formally officially members we have of course many more uh, attenders in other places but you can see a lot in north america we have one in south america we have several other frequent attenders in south america those are just our members and then the for europe you can see we have uk portugal I believe Switzerland, Northern Italy, Germany, the Netherlands, maybe. Anyway, it's oh, and, and also here's a picture that just shows for the US where all of our members are. So it should be Kuwait as well. Oh, you're you're right. I think they caught you're that. Right. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to get it into the map. Well, I'm pretty sure he gave his address, so he was he's a member. Yeah, he sh I think I made this map before we got him got him as a mm -hmm. member. So Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, I just wanted to show you show show this to y'all because I think it is kind of exciting just to see all the places we come from and all. So, I've so got, let's go ahead and I'll I've, go for it, Stephen. Um, what's the difference between being on the mailing list and being a member? You have well, to get your address first of all to be a member because the Spinoza Havara requires that. And then there's some, <clears throat> we're in the process of creating a dues paying process here. Is this okay, James? If I, and yeah, yeah. You could pay the dues instead of, instead of paying dues to Spinoza, to the SSHA, you can pay them through the Spinoza Havara. But you have to give, you, you, I mean, there's, was there more requirement than that? But you have well, to give. But no, basically. Basically, we, we're still working out the structure for this a little bit. We did have a call out a while back to saying, hey, if you want to be a formal member, to be on our, our initial list, please let us know. But what it will look like in the future is to be a member of the Spinoza Havra would be you'd fill out an application form. Uh, and the biggie is having uh, your mailing address and email address. Uh, our leadership team would then vote to accept you. And then at that point, then what we're asking is we won't have, I don't think we're going to have a mandatory dues, but we are going to ask for either a donation or a commitment for volunteering during the coming year. We'll have some suggested giving amounts, but we all come from very, very different socioeconomic circumstances, different parts of the world. And so we know we're not going to have, you have to pay X amount to dues to be a member. We're not doing it like that. Our hope is, is that we'll have enough come in this way through voluntary donations that we'll be able to pay our dues for the SH because we pay dues to the SHJ being an affiliated congregation and then to cover some of our costs like having the paid Zoom accounts and someday down the road maybe compensating some of our folks for work they do. But for right now, we're really just kind of focusing on Zoom accounts website and paying our SHJ dues. So it's, you know, baby steps, but, uh, but anyway, but the, our email list is, uh, anyone can join our email list. And I think we have about, is like about 300 on our email list? 500. I have to send out two invitations a month because Gmail limits me to 500. So it's like 520 wow. people on the mailing list. A lot of these people have never come. Some of are in places like Micronesia, <laughs> you know, but some people have never come, but we've had what, uh, 50 or so, over 50 who have come at one point or another. So only 10% have ever come at one point or another. And then we, of course, a lot of people are regulars, absolutely. And, and 30 some are considered members, but that's gonna grow. Uh, if you give your address, I believe, let's please know how, what does that mean, Diane? <laughs> Uh, that so, sorry, the, the interruption. Uh, Aaron was saying hopefully we we'll switch to Discord platform eventually, and, and and I was saying please no because I've been in other groups on on Discord and oh, uh, I can't to me it, it's difficult, it's impossible to read and to understand the whole you know conversations on Discord. I don't like it. we have just for our pool here. We're in a condo. We have. WhatsApp. I hate it. It keeps downloading junk on my computer. I have to keep deleting. Uh, I mean, it's, I don't like any of these things. I like Facebook. I'm old. I like Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing will be, I mean, all, you won't, in other words, a lot of people aren't on Facebook either. You know, it's, you don't have to be on anything, but I know you want to participate in stuff. So 
if they do that, you, you, you're tempted, but I, I'm, I'm against it too. So I'm putting in my dibs. I do think what we'll probably continue to do is share information about our services and what on a few platforms. So for instance, I usually post it on, besides our emails, I usually post on Facebook and I post it on Mastodon. Um, so Aaron, I guess I would say on Discord, there'll be no problem with, with, with us setting something up. I mean, if it being one more channel to, to share stuff on, I don't think we're going to get everyone to participate on it. But uh, I, I wouldn't have a problem necessarily of us sharing, you know, having another platform as long as, you know, there's some details to work out, but it's certainly a possibility. So I mean, I've never even been successfully able to get onto Mastodon. I've tried numerous ways and, and nobody, you know, I never get that. Yes, you're in. Never. So. Yeah, there, there's some, it's tech issues. Aaron, you have your hand up. So um, I'm fairly new, relatively new to Discord. And I know that we're, we've mentioned several, Mastodon, I know nothing about. WhatsApp, I also get blasted now with all kinds of garbage on WhatsApp. Um, so that's a different, and I'm not advocating uh, mm -hmm. I'm just saying I've recently gone to Discord uh, and done video voice channel video meetings. But I do agree it takes it is can be confusing. I'm still new at it. So and there are and it's not a perfect uh, platform, but it is free and uh, easy to get into. But true. Uh, there are people who would not know how to get into Discord and it would cause certain challenges. Uh, I just don't like how expensive, I mean, Zoom is obviously the worldwide dominating, you know, goodbye Skype, Zoom mm. completely dominated over it. But, but um, I just don't like now that Zoom has you know, is so expensive once they got control of everyone. But who knows? Discord could take over and then rate and then start charging exorbitant. It, it's capitalism. So mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. We've used free Zoom as long as you're limiting yourself to 40 minutes. We've successfully done that a few times, but you can't run this that way. Yeah. yeah. We, right now we have two paid Martin and I each have a paid account and uh it's right now we're paying we're paying for it ourselves. I think eventually we'll start paying for it out of the, the money we have donated. So anyway, well, let's go ahead and finish out our service and then we'll we'll leave the zoom open. We can continue continue having some discussion. So I'm gonna share screen for the last for this last part. But I really appreciate all the good discussion today. Uh and as soon as we have the issue out, I'll let y'all know. By the way, um we um uh, the as as um as if you're a member of the, the Spinoza Havra, you will get access to the magazine. But I'll probably go ahead and send I'll probably excerpt out just these pages and send them. We might send them to more people. We'll I need to talk with the other to the other people in the magazine to see if I'm allowed to do that or not. But I'm hoping that we will be. So and the, the, anyway, the, let me being an official member, excuse me. Imagine being an official member, you get uh, all the resources whatever they are at Spinoza Hover, at the SHJ. So that's with people who were looking for that. Um, that's one of the advantages to being a, a member of the Spinoza Hover. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry, my, there we go. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I magazine lost the program. So we now turn our, our, our minds and hearts towards those who need our love, who are ill, who are lonely, who, su who, suffer, who suffer pain, who have been wronged. Let us pause as we call out their names. I'm thinking this morning of my friend, Carl Rod. Susie. My mother, Je uh, Sarah. Herb.
May all who suffer know they are not alone. May they experience Rafua Shlema, the renewal of body and spirit. Mekom Akoak, Betokenu Mekorot, Habarka Meke Rotenu. May the source of strength that dwells so deep within us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Let Amen. us make peace in the world. Let us make peace for us, mm -hmm. for, all, for all Israel and for all humanity. And we say, Amen. Nase shalom baholaha. Nase shalom aleinu. Ve'al po Yisrael. Ve'al po Yoshve Tevel. Ve'noma, ve'noma. Amen. And we now come to our time in the service to remember those who have gone before us, people that we are remembering today. And so let us say, say their names of people we are remembering today. I'm thinking today of all those who have been lost in, in the wars in Israel and Palestine and, and over the last year. Are there any other names that folks, folks have to remember today? May there be a good remembrance and compassion and kindness and love from all the world upon the names of our honorable loved ones who have passed from the world. Let us make a place in our hearts to remember their good names, a good memory, and let us honor them with good deeds. May their memory be a blessing forever. Amen. Amen. Yehena zekuron tov Hamin ve. Ahava Miko Aulam Al Shemot Am Amekuvade Yakurinu Sheavarim Min Haulam Hava Nitsur Belibenu et Shemot Hatovim Vezikram Hatov Venokiram Bema Asim Tovim Zikranam Libraka Leolam Va Ed Amen. Now we come to our version of the Elenu. Who would like to uh, to read this, e either in Hebrew or in English? I'll go. Uh, it is upon us to praise the beauty of the world, even as we fall and rise up, and to continue the work of repairing the world. For within us is the power to build and repair, and it is in our hands to bring about liberation. And one day, humanity will be united and one in purpose. Amen. And now we come to our time for Kiddush. And so if you have wine or some other special beverage handy, go ahead and, ha and grab it. I'm this morning enjoying my hot tea, so I'll be saying, it, saying a Kiddush over my hot tea. <laughs> so we raise our glass. And on the sixth day and on the seventh day, we complete the labor which we perform. And we refrain on the seventh day from all our labor, and we bless the seventh day and set it aside, for we refrain from all the labor which we have to do. And keeping our glasses raised, Yom Hashi'i Benakal Bayom Hashvi'i Hamelaka Asher Neesta, Vatishabot Bayom Hashvi'i Kol Hamelaka Asher Neesta, Nevarak et Yom Hashvi'i Van Kadesh Oto, Kivo Shavatanu. Mikol Hemelaka Asher Bakanu Leasot. Savri Kavarim Vekarut. Attention, friends, and we raise our glasses some more. Baru Kahor Bakaim Pure Pure Hagafen. And we all say Amen. And then if you have bread handy, go ahead and grab it and let us lift up our bread. Blessed are those that bring forth bread from the earth. Amen. Amen. And Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. So we'll leave the Zoom up for a little bit for further Shabbat conversation, Shabbat. but that was the close of our service. I'm going to 
stop the recording.